Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Ask a Physicist. A special episode, if you will, because I was thinking that to make sure that you all in your proper Christmas spirit this year, I address some of the really quite disturbing theories that have been popping up all over the place concerning the end of the world, which apparently may be due this December. Because, well, I have been looking into these theories to, uh, well, an extent quite more than I would have enjoyed, and it really does appear to me that they are really quite unphysical and far-fetched at most. And I would like to share that with you. So uh, sit back, relax, and join me as I try to explain to you in as much detail as I can why uh, these so-called theories are indeed nothing you should be worried about. So let's go. Now the first thing you might have heard of with regards to um, the 2012 end of the world scenarios is that uh, allegedly the Mayan calendar is coming to an end this December 2012. The Mayans used their gift for understanding the Earth's movements to create a remarkably precise calendar, one that has endured for thousands of years. It ends on December 21st, 2012. You might be surprised to hear that this is not actually true. The Mayan calendar is not ending this December, at least not any more than our calendar is ending this December. You see, uh, a quick look to Wikipedia will reveal that the Mayan calendar is not actually that different to ours. The only difference is that while our calendar has units of days, months, years, uh, decades and centuries, they have their own sets of units, which last different amount of time, including the Baktun. Now, from what I've read, a Baktun lasts 394 years. And this one is coming to an end this December, and then the next one is starting, so on and so forth. The last time a Baktun ended was in 1618. Well, and it doesn't seem that there were many Earth-destroying events happening back then, nor in the 13 end of Baktuns preceding that. A Baktun is not even the greatest unit of time in the Mayan calendar. So any suggestion that the Mayan calendar by design was made to end the same time that the world ends is absolutely ludicrous. Maybe I should point out at this stage that I find it rather disrespectful to reduce a whole civilization to nothing more but its supposed prophecies about the end of the world. But let's get into the physics of the matter. Many of you will have seen videos like this. In the Milky Way, which is an active galaxy, our solar system cyclically moves above and below this galactic plane. As stars and planetary systems, including our own, approach this galactic plane, the gravitational influence increases, which disturbs the stability of each planet, including Earth. The passage through the densest portion of the gravitational plane is the direct cause of the devastating cycles and pole shifts that we see recorded throughout Earth's history. Well, before I get too deep into this, I should point out this is not entirely wrong. The Sun and thus the Earth are indeed passing periodically through the plane of the galaxy. That is to say, if you look at our galaxy, the Milky Way, it does indeed look like a plane, or a plate, if you will. And due to the concentrated mass in the plane, that the Sun is moving up and down through that plane by gravitational attraction. Now, what this video fails to mention, or rather, what it severely misconstrues, is the fact that the Earth, or the Sun rather, actually takes 20 to 30 million years to pass the galactic plane. In fact, if you can trust science, uh, we know that it actually only quite recently, or shall we say a few million years ago, went out of the plane. So, in other words, we will not be passing the galactic plane 
for probably another 20 million years. So, even if there was, for some reason, an apocalyptic event happening this December, it would have nothing to do with the motion of the Sun through the galactic plane. But let's move on to the next video. After the destruction, the old lion turned around. Some interpret this reference of the old lion turning around as a description of the Earth experiencing a cataclysmic reversal of its rotation. They believe such a reversal can be caused by an extreme phenomenon called a polar shift. Scientists theorize that a polar shift can occur when the Earth's swirling molten core changes direction. Some speculate that this would trigger vast and sudden displacements in the Earth's crust. This is when, if you can imagine, the crust of the Earth is going to rotate somewhat over the magma. The problem is, is when you actually get the physical crust of the Earth rotating, that's when we're going to be in for a ride. Now, let's make some things perfectly clear. The Earth is not jumping on its head. No one in the whole field of science suggests this. This is perfectly fabricated by, well, I don't know who. Now, what is true is that the Earth periodically experiences geomagnetic reversals. I have talked about this extensively in a previous video of mine. What this means is that the Earth's magnetic field switches on its head. In other words, the North Pole becomes the South Pole and the South Pole becomes the North Pole. We know this to be true from records of magnetized material in cooled down magma. From these records, furthermore, we can tell that these reversals take no less than a thousand years to complete. I'd say it's a pretty long time. So, in other words, even if December 2012 was the beginning of a geomagnetic reversal, we would not see the effects that this reversal has within one, maybe several hundred years. So pinpoint in 2012 as the end of the world because of the geomagnetic reversals is again absolutely ludicrous. Okay, so far so good, but let's move on to an even more popular and possibly even more shocking theory, namely that of Planet X which, to my understanding, is the idea that in our solar system there appears to be another planet that we are unaware of, which is going to come into close contact with the Earth this December. I suppose, since they removed Pluto from the definition of a planet, I suppose you should really be calling it Planet Ix, but Let's not get into that, because this theory has much greater problems than its name. But according to the Colburn Bible, the extraterrestrial force that triggers the event is not the Sun. Instead, the prophecy mentions a mysterious celestial body called the Destroyer. The text says it will not collide with the Earth, but pass close enough to trigger global devastation. It has its own magnetic field, positive and negative. The planet Earth also has its own magnetic field. It necessarily doesn't even have to collide, but if it grazes by, it literally can cause upthrusts and downthrusts of the land. The Colburn Bible also recounts how the destroyer has passed by the Earth several times. According to the text, the last occurrence devastated Egypt 3,600 years ago. Now, the idea behind this theory seems to be that the, this additional planet moves around the Sun with an extremely elliptical orbit, taking more than 3,000 years to make a complete turn, and when it does, gets close into the orbit of Earth, reaches havoc, goes around again for the same period, and comes back again, again interacting with Earth, so on and so forth. 
Now, there are several problems with this theory you can easily spot. First of all, no modern sky survey has detected this planet, even though planets in the sky tend to be pretty bright, and this one should be pretty close by now. Secondly, well, for a star to have a period like this, it has to move out extremely far. Nowhere in our solar system, or any solar system for that matter, have we seen a planet moving in such a way. And it really doesn't make sense to, to do so. The gravitational attraction of the Sun at this distance is much lower than that on other planets. Thus, an asteroid impact or the like on this planet would severely alter its trajectory. Thirdly, in order for this planet to do its orbit and reach the Earth, it has to cross the orbits of Saturn and Jupiter, both very massive and both very likely to severely perturb this orbit. So even if at a far distance the, this planet was on its way to hit the Earth, it is quite likely to be affected by them and thus put onto a different path. Well, let's just suppose for a moment there is indeed this planet and has indeed interacted with the Earth gravitationally 3000 years ago. The idea that this planet would 3000 years later meet the Earth again, or rather the idea that we could predict such a thing happen, is uh, not only unlikely, it is virtually impossible. And let me explain why. Well, it turns out this scenario is actually a very good example of what in physics we call the three-body problem, which is an example of chaos theory. Now, let me explain what this is. Um, well, for a two-body system, let's say the Earth and the Sun, we can make very clear predictions about the future of the system for centuries and millennia to come. That is because if you have two bodies, which are not affected by bodies further out, uh, we have a regular system um, that obeys very simple physical relationships. Uh, so, even if the Earth was further out or closer in, it would still follow an elliptical path around the Sun and it would be very predictable. Now, a three-body problem is quite different from that. If we took the example of the Earth and planet X orbiting the Sun and meeting each other, well, uh, they would not go back into their regular orbits. Quite to the contrary, when these two planets interact, they would throw each other off into new random trajectories. And the idea that they would see each other again is extremely unlikely. In fact, if the initial conditions here were only slightly different, i.e. if the mass of the Earth was only slightly greater, or if planet X was only slightly further out, uh, the result on these new trajectories would be drastically different. And that is what we call chaos. So, the idea that by having observed an interaction between planet X and the Earth and being able to tell from that that it will happen again is again absolutely ludicrous. Well, I think that is all I have to say on this matter for now. So, if you have been affected by the aforementioned theories, I hope I've helped to clear things up for you, and I hope you have a wonderful Christmas. Well, on the other hand, if you are the person who is responsible for making these theories, or even propagating them, then, well, I think you and I should have a serious conversation. Because, I mean, if you honestly cared about the world, and threats from outer space, then I'd say you'd probably not be making up random ideas like these, but you'd be uh, joining a project like uh, Space Guard or other projects which are actively allowing amateur astronomers to look out for asteroids and other nearby objects to the Earth, which could be an actual threat. And if you honestly cared about planets other than the ones we already know, you'd probably be joining a project like Planet Hunters, which also allows amateur astronomers 
to actively aid scientists in discovering new planets. I mean, that's real research, which you could be doing. But then again, it doesn't really seem like you care about these things. The way I see it, what you actually care about is attention. I mean, you have nothing. You have no scientific facts to back you up. You don't even have a viable theory. All you do is scare people into believing you. You appeal to the most basic human instinct of survival and thereby frighten people into not questioning your blatantly falsifiable logic. It is really rather sad and I really hope you'll stop and that 2012 will be the last year you have to go through this nonsense. But anyways, even to you, I wish you a very happy Christmas. And to all of you, I'm looking forward to seeing you all alive and well in the new year, with many new videos to come. Thanks for watching and goodbye.